hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel my name is evidence and in today's video i am going to show you how to create pca manually so in the previous videos i showed you how to create pca using circuit learn library and then i also showed you how to explain your pca using a screw plot and in the other video we ended up with graph like looking like this one and in the PCA using circuit learn library, we ended up with a graph looking like this one. All right. So make sure you go ahead and check out those videos on PCA using circuit to learn and how to explain it using a script plot. So today's video will be mostly focused on how to build PCA manually. In the previous videos, I went over a brief overview of what PCA is. Just in case you've seen this before, I'm going to skip this all the way to the end. At the end, I'll come back and explain this again. Uh, but quickly before we start coding, this is basically the PCA process. First, you get your data ready for analysis. Then you standardize your data by subtracting the mean of each column from each value. And this is called centering the data at zero. So the mean is now zero. And then you divide each column by a standard deviation. And this kind of completes the standardization process. Then you calculate the variance covariance matrix. Um, you get the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And then you sort and graph the eigenvectors, eigenvalues pair. So with that being said, let's go ahead and begin. So first, let's go ahead and import a lot of things. Let's go ahead and import NumPy as NP. Let's go ahead and imp from NumPy. Let's import mean, standard deviation, covariance, array. And then let's do from NumPy dot linear algebra let's import eig all right and i went ahead and created dummy data right here that we're going to be using and um, let's start by calculating the mean of each column so we're gonna calculate the mean of each column and then we say means is equal to mean and when I say mean here, you know, I'm calling this mean function from NumPy. When I say array here, I'm calling this array function from NumPy. So we want to calculate um, the mean of each column. So we are going to do x dot transpose. T means transpose. And then we want to do it for axis equal to one so if i go ahead and do um x dot t it basically um transposes our data so here you can see um we have um 135 as this thing and then it basically transposes it so um, rows become columns columns becomes rows that makes sense so instead of having one, two, you know, all the way to the end, we then have um, one, three, five, seven, nine. So basically, one, three, five, seven, nine are, are all in the same column. And they are um, the X, and we are going to be using two, four, six, eight um, as the Y, you know. So um, we are going to transpose it, and then axis equal to one just um, do, makes means to do it by row. Axis equal to zero is the default, which means column wise. Okay, and then axis equal to one means row. So it's for this first column, it's going to calculate the mean right here. First, it will transpose it, then calculate the mean um, row wise, and then calculate the mean here. So I just wanted to explain this code a little bit so you don't get confused. So let's go ahead and print our means and see what it looks like. And as you can see right here, the mean of our value is 6, 7. And if you are paranoid, um, 
we can do this right here okay and we can we can get the sum of this right here and then we can do 36 divided by 6 because there are 6 items in this as you can see the value is 6 and we can do the same thing for this um, row right here and the answer is 42 and then if we do 42 divided by 6 the answer is 7 okay so if you are paranoid <laughs> you can like do your calculations manually and kind of see that you're getting the right answer so this is the mean for each column um, now we are going to center our data our columns by subtracting um, each value from its mean so at the end the mean is gonna be zero so I'm just gonna call it center is equal to x minus the means and then we are just gonna print center so as you can see right here, um, this is our new data. After subtracting each value from the mean, then uh, negative five, negative this is our distance, is our new values. And if you take um, these values, negative five, negative three, negative one, and add it to one, three, five, the answer comes out to be zero, and if zero divided by zero is zero. So the mean of our columns now is zero. So now we calculate standard deviation of each column. And we are just going to call it um, dev is equal to std parenthesis x dot t and then axis equal to 1 again just like we did before. And remember this std is coming from uh, numpy std, numpy standard deviation. And we can here we can do dev to get a preview of what it looks like and this is supposed to be capital letter t so this is the standard deviation of every single column divide um, the centered data by standard deviation to finish standardization so by dividing our center data by the um, standard deviation we are finishing up the standardization process so i just i'm um, gonna call it standard is equal to we are gonna do center divided by dev all right and we are just gonna print um i said dev not deviation <laughs> We are just going to print standard here. As you can see, this is our standardized data right here. And uh, when I use scikit-learn to do the standardization, we got the same results. So here, this is the exact same data set. Okay. And then I use um, scikit-learn standard scalar to standardize the data. And we got, this is the result that we got. And when we did the standardization manually, we also got um, the exact same result. So if you are paranoid, you can use um, scikit-learn library to double check yourself if you need to. So now we are going to calculate the variance, covariance matrix of the standardized data. So I'm just gonna say covariance is equal to curve and I'm just gonna do z dot t, oh, no standard. That's why I got it. So um, basically, this curve is coming from here. Curve from numpy, and you can get um, the covariance matrix by just take, um, getting the covariance of the value transposed. So this right here. So basically the next step is to get the again the composition of the covariance matrix. Okay. So let me show you what step we are in. So we've done our standardization, we've gotten the variance covariance matrix. Now we are going to get the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. 
by um, getting the eigen decomposition of the variance covariance matrix. And we are going to use be using EIG from NumPy linear algebra. So we are going to do values, vectors is equal to EIG, and then we are going to put in covariance. And here we can go ahead and let's say print values, print vectors. And these are our eigenvalues and these are our eigenvectors. So this is the eigenvalues and this is the eigenvectors. And again, if you are paranoid, you can double check using circuit learn library. So if we go back to our circuit um, learn version of this, as you can see, um, pca.component is the eigenvectors, okay? And that's the same thing that we got here, okay? This is the vectors, the same values that we got. And then pca.explained variance is the eigenvalues. All right, so this is the value. And that's what we got here. Well, that's not exactly what we got here. So here we got 2.4. And then here we got 2.2 times 10 to the negative 16. Here we got 2.4 and then 3 times 10 to the negative 32. So I wonder why the difference. But the numbers are um, quite similar. So that's uh, really exciting to be able to do this manually. So now that we have um, our eigenvalues and our eigenvectors, the next step is to um, project our data and then we can go ahead and graph it. And NumPy has a function called dot product. So if you do np dot dot, as you can see right here, it gives you the dot product of two arrays. Basically it multiplies two arrays, okay? So if you provide it with two arrays, in this situation A and B, and then if it's a 1D matrix, it will do inner product of the vectors. So basically it will multiply the two provided vectors, and if it's a 2D array, that is if it's a matrix, and then to use um, the math mean function, which is the preferred version. So, and if you provide A and B and they're both um, scalar, which means zero dimension arrays, then it will, that's the equivalent of numpy dot multiply, which just multiplies A and B. Okay, so if, I, if you see me using dot dot, what, I, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm multiplying two arrays together. So let me call it just project is equal to, we are going to do our vectors dot T. We already know what this does. And then we are going to um, do, we are going to multiply our vectors with our standardized data, which is Z. What did I call it? <laughs> Let's see. I called uh, the standardized data standard. Standard dot T. Okay. So right here, I'm taking these vectors that we got here and I'm multiplying it with our standardized data. And here I'm just gonna type in project. And that is what it looks like if I do project.t. Um, it makes it look a whole lot better, obviously. And this is basically our, our pieces. So basically this right here is our principal components. If we um, look at the circuit learn library and when we finish with the circuit learn library, this we are our principal components and these are the results that we got. The result that we got here for our principal components is the same thing that we got here for our principal components when we did it manually. So this is pretty cool. This is really, really exciting. I always find it very exciting to like take a circuit long library and kind of do it manually and see if I can get the same results. And we can go ahead and kind of plot this and see if we can get the same results. So, and let's go ahead and plot this. So let me see, um, this is 
PC1 is equal to principal opposition 1 and PC2 is equal to principal opposition 2. And I'm just going to run this in a different code cell so you can kind of see what it does. So, um, principal at, oh, that's why, it's, that's why I was wrong. So, principal dot T. <laughs> I was like, wait, that doesn't look right. So, there we go. Because I was looking at it, I was like, what? So, make sure you transpose stuff so everything will look right. Um, so, our principal dot T. Make sure you add dot T here. All right. And so this right here is basically everything in the first row, which is our X, and everything in the second, I mean, everything in the first column, which is our X, everything in the second column, which is kind of our Y. So that's what this code does. And let's go ahead and plot this. Okay. <laughs> Not bad. Um, it doesn't quite look exactly as I want it to look. But um, we got close enough. You know, this is still exciting. Being able to um, do principal component analysis manually. When we use the circuit to learn library, this is what it looks like. You know, and uh, uh, actually, this is what our before graph looks like. When we use the circuit to learn library, this is what our graph ended up looking like. So it doesn't quite look exactly like the one from scikit learn. I mean, our numbers are a little bit to reverse. Here we have negative first and then the positive numbers, but in the scikit learn is the positive numbers first than the negative numbers. But still, this was a fun exercise looking at um, how to build principal component analysis from scratch. And just to reiterate what we just did, we started with a dummy data. And then we got the mean for that data. We subtracted each value from the mean. And then we got a standard deviation for, for each column. Then we divided the mean by the standard deviation. And then we got the covariance matrix for our standardized data. We got the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And then we got... Um, the principal component. That's basically it for this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you made it this far in this video but you didn't like it, please give it a double thumbs down and still subscribe to the channel. To get access to this notebook that I use in today's video, just go to machinelearningeducation.com. This is a platform I created just for you. And once you are here, just click on free data science resources. And it will bring you to this page. And this is where I have my data science tutorial Python notebooks. So I create a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of blogs. And I end up with, with a lot of notebooks. And I just find it easier and more straightforward to take all those notebooks and put it in one platform. So that's machinelearningeducation.com slash free. Go there to get access to this notebook and other resources that I have for you. And you can also visit me online at evidencen.com. This is my primary website where I have my data science blog post. And as time goes by, I'll create more and more stuff and add it here to my data science blog post. And once you are here, you can also click on free data science resources and be able to get access to this page. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye.